Hare Krishna, Subway workflow. You know, the weekend's almost here. My son just graduated, he's doing good in school. Thank you for all of the blessings that the Vaishnava community and all my friends and family and supporters be sending, because a lot of those blessings transfer to my son. I don't need them, I'm good. I got the Hare Krishna mantra, you know what I mean? So, I just want to talk about a little phenomenon that I noticed is that the popularity of yoga is spreading all around the world right now. You know, yoga is real big. Oh man, I'm coming to my favorite diner right now. 10 minutes after nine, I'm almost late for work, so let me make a move. What, what's up, Bobby? How you doing, man? You get that on um, toasted. Yeah, let me get the toasted um butter roll with um. Pro, yeah, pepper jack cheese. Jalapeno. Don't put no bacon on it today because I'm on camera. We got it. Okay, cool. cool. So, huh? We got it, buddy. Okay, cool. Anyway, right? So, um, I noticed this phenomenon where yoga is spreading throughout the whole world. And the interesting thing is that as yoga becomes more popular, the haters come out the woodworks, you know, with their claws and all of that. I noticed that a lot of Christians are haters. I noticed that people on this planet are haters. Like, if you're ignorant to something, you automatically assume that that person is doing wrong. If you see me on the bus chanting and stuff, maybe you should ask me what I'm doing instead of fixing up your face weird. Because I noticed that frankincense and myrrh only affects evil people. Like, if you're straight evil or if you got a lot of demonic infiltration, when somebody burns frankincense and myrrh, you start to feel uncomfortable. Likewise, some people are un who have unholy contamination in their aura will become uncomfortable in the presence of that which is holy just like dirt don't like clean and clean don't like dirt so a lot of people they make assumptions because they don't understand what you're doing that you're the one who's doing wrong so i just like to make a side by side yes sister in rastafari Hare krishna let me put you on camera. The world got to see a beautiful woman like you. All right? I'm going to let, let them see. see you oh, yeah, no. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, no. All right, sis. Cool. All right. Yeah, that, that's that's the, the chef, the extraordinaire. We're going to teach her to make some prashadam soon. So anyway, right? So what I do notice is that, so popularity like yoga, and then you have ignorant people who will say things like, well, yoga is demonic. Yoga is demonic. Yoga deals with evil spirits. They don't have no proof. They don't have a machine that can show you the evil spirits, but they'll still say meditation is evil. Why are you chanting? That's that's like demonic. But let's let's talk about demonism. Who's doing all of the animal slaughter on this planet Earth right now? Who's killing all the innocent animals? Christians. Who's incarcerating more people in America than some countries even have a population? Dímelo, cantando. Háblame. So who's doing all of the animal slaughter? Christians. Where is all of the unwanted pregnancy? Christian homes. Unwanted population? Christianity. Who's polluting the earth? Christians. Who's opening up all of the liquor shops? Christians. I don't see yoga practitioners going around starting animal slaughter farms. I don't see yoga practitioners have more control over their senses so you're going to see less unwanted pregnancies in a yogic family. So it's like, yo, y'all gotta be easy how y'all are judging people because yoga and Krishna consciousness is taking over your planet. And there will be no space for falsehood. And for all my black Christian brothers and sisters out there, I just want you to remember that approximately 400 years ago, somebody took a whip out and beat you over your back and broke your neck and raped your wife and all of that stuff and forced you to become a Christian, forced you to change your name to Toby. If you are a Christian, you have a short memory. That's what Chris Rock said. If you're black and you're a Christian, you got a short memory. So for all of my people out there who want to disrespect and say, why are you Krishna conscious? Yo, man, Krishna consciousness ain't coming to your hood forcing your women to get pregnant young. We ain't coming to your hood opening up liquor shops selling Lucy cigarettes in the store, we ain't, we ain't doing that. All we want to do is absorb the world in the transcendental love of God. Ain't nothing wrong with love. The Bible, Deuteronomy tells you, it's a commandment to the children of Israel to love the Lord thy God with your heart, your soul, your spirit, and your mind. And teach this to your children, write it on the walls, put it on your head, put it on the door. That's why the Jews, when you buy a house that a Jew owned, it has a mezuzah. 
mezuzah is on the right hand side and it contains a scroll just like the Narsim HaKavacha. I don't have a Narsim HaKavacha on my neck right now, but a Narsim HaKavacha has a scroll in it. That Kavacha spelled K-A-V-A-C-A. So the Christian Bible, the Jewish Bible, will tell you to love God. That's cool, but that's incomplete information. Because at least in the Vedas, like the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam, it also simultaneously tells you how Krishna reciprocates. It's okay to love people. It's definitely okay to love. It's definitely okay to give love freely. But it's also good to know how you're going to get a return on your investment. Christianity does not give you that information. You don't know how God loves you back. The Quran tells you, Allahu Akbar. Allah is great. But Srila Prabhupada says, the Bhagavad Gita tells you how great. Demon, demon. Thanks, man. This is the best store. You see this guy? He makes the best anything you want. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. Come here, man. This is the spot. <laughs> yeah, so, um. This is grilled cheese? Grilled cheese, yeah. Uh huh. So, I lost my thought. Thank you, thank you, man. Have a good day, alright? Alright. I lost my thought, but um, let's, let's just rewind a little. So, 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 I hate when this happens. Um, all I'm asking you to do is everybody be fair minded out there, alright? Just be fair minded and don't be closed minded because ignorance is a choice. You can choose to be ignorant. That's what the word ignore means. So, all my Christian people out there, yo, wake up, man. Get up, come on, man. Wake up. You're practicing nonsense. The black and Latino community is suffering more than any other community. But if I go to China, Jesus looks Chinese. I go to Israel, Jesus looks Israeli. I go to Europe, Jesus looks European. So what's the justification for having a European deity in your home when that's not your body type? Of course, spirit is spirit. Krishna is black. Not black as in black Indian or black African. He is black. He's in, he's, his body is not like mine or yours. It's Sat Chit Ananda. But it doesn't change the fact that black is black is black is black. It doesn't change the fact. The human race is a tropical species. So they started off as black. The most genetic information on this planet Earth is contained in the black race. The most, in other words, you can splice any race off of a black couple. You can produce a Latino, Indian, Native American, European. You can produce them all from a black couple. But you cannot take two Indians and create a black man and woman. You cannot take two white people and create a black man and woman. It just does not work. The genetic information encoded from the Prajapati race, the progenitors of life in this cosmos, was encoded in the black race. If you don't like it, I can't help you. Science proves this, you know what I'm saying? This is not racism, this is not bodily concept. It's all about respecting God's children. Don't claim that you're a holy person and you don't have respect for all of God's children. Black hair is showing you the hair itself, the way the black hair is structured. It rebels against gravity. Only things that have a heavenly or spiritual nature can go against the laws of physics. So black hair is divine. Respect your hair, love your hair. Personally, the reason why a lot of black men are marrying women of other races is because our women are so good at showing us how beautiful women of other races are. You see all of these African women, out of 10 African women, 1.3 will have their natural hair. The other 8 or 9, psh, they all got European hair. So I've been seeing this from childhood. So of course... The white woman is going to be beautiful to me because my black woman shows me how beautiful she is with her long, lovely, stringy hair. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real. I don't care, man. This is, this is how I rock. I've always been like this. If I make a few enemies, then it's better than being fake and having a whole bunch of fake friends. Harry Bowl. So yeah, that black hair is divine. Respect your hair. When you have an afro, it looks like the sunshine. It's no need to live in the image of others when God created you as beautiful as can be. Zifeasho, how are you? You good? Good, good. Yeah, so man, just be who you are. Love and respect yourself. You know, if you got hair that's anti-gravity, that should tell you that your nature is to go up, not to go down. I'm not interested in a woman with fake nails, 
fake eyelashes, fake eyeballs, fake hair, and then she want me to be a real nigga. Come on, man. It just don't, it doesn't fit, all right? So let's just keep it real. Appreciate everybody for their beauty and how God created us. They say that the human race is arranged like the flowers in a garden and that our skin tones represent the flowers in the spiritual garden. So respect everybody and love yourselves. Peace and blessings, everybody. All right, all right. Hare Krishna. Just keeping it real.